Okay, so in this video we're going to start discussing ellipses and um, we're going to start with ellipses always centered at the origin and then we're going to then progress into ellipses that are going to be shifted or translated on our coordinate graph. Um, so we got a few things here that we need to look at when we're discussing ellipses and some of the key terms are uh, center, vertices, co-vertices, and foci. Uh, it's plural for focus. Um, so an ellipse is very similar to a circle. Um, it has basically two different radius um, or radii um, that are going to be different lengths. A circle is an ellipse, but an ellipse is not a circle. Um, kind of like how a rectangle is not a square, but a square is a rectangle. Uh, the ellipse is only different because the distance is not the same all the way around from the center. And it's basically generated by drawing a circle instead of around the radius, it's around these two focal points. Um, and so we'll start with basic uh, descriptions. And here's what the formula looks like. So you can see here, we got a lot of different things going on here, but it's actually pretty similar to our uh, standard equation for a circle. Notice in the numerator with these fractions, I have the x minus h squared and the y minus k squared. And um, so that's from our uh, standard format from the equation for a circle. We're equal to some number like a radius. It's not a radius, but it's always going to equal 1. So for these shapes, we always want it to equal 1. And these two numbers at the bottom are going to cause uh, the change um, in the radius. So this a squared and b squared at the bottom is what's causing the change. And so these two guys are what are going to make it different than a circle. Um, and so I'm just going to use this general format, um, this general graph, to start labeling what these two things are. And notice here I have this statement that says a squared is greater than b squared. And so when we look at these two numbers at the bottom, when a squared or the number at the bottom is larger than the number at the bottom for y, we know it's a horizontal major axis because it's the largest number would be underneath the x. And we'll disc I'll discuss that more as we go through problems because that's not going to make so much sense right now, but you're going to see it more often and I'll, I'll keep on bringing that um, to your attention so you get uh, comfortable with that because we need to know if I say horizontal major axis you need to know that it's going to be longer along the x and that's what this means right here okay so it's longer along the x so I'm just gonna label a few things here so I'm actually gonna do this in red because it's probably gonna come out a little bit better this guy right here uh, that's our center and it's zero zero and this guy right here and this guy right here are the vertices okay so that's a vertex and this is a vertex the distance from the center to one of these guys is a okay this right here and this right here these blue dots are the co-vertices or co-vertex and the distance from here to here is B and then we're going to have these other things that are going to be let's zoom in here real quick we have these other things that are going to be on the major axis and I'm calling it a major axis because it's the longer one and the major axis always has the focus so the focus, which will also always be on the inside of the shape, is the distance from the center um, to this piece called the focus. And uh, the letter that we use to define this is C. Okay, And so these are all the different pieces uh, that you are going to have to find and plot and graph and then draw it. Um, trust me, as you become more comfortable with this, it's very easy to do. Each shape by itself is easy, but then you got to know how to do each one, so you got to keep them all straight. 
And one of the other things that I mentioned is we call this a um, major axis. The major axis is horizontal. It's major because uh, the x is the longer. Okay. So now, and when we actually do some of these problems with numbers, I'll actually uh, point out all these pieces, and we'll talk about A and B, and put them into the equation and work with them. Uh, and so now we're dealing with a vertical major axis, and it's a vertical major axis. Notice what's happened here real quick. We still have our standard x minus h squared, y minus k squared, that's always in the numerator, but notice the switch between the b and the a. a squared, so the a in an ellipse is always bigger than b, and notice that a is now underneath the y. So that tells me right away, when I see the bigger number underneath the y, I know my major axis is going to be vertical. So here's how that changes. So as I look at this picture, I know now I'm going to have my vertices are going to be on the Y now. So this guy right here is a vertex, and this guy right here is a vertex, which means that the focus, and I'm just approximating, we'll find them algebraically in a little bit, but um, the Vert, excuse me, the foci are going to be on whatever the major axis is, whether it's vertical or horizontal. So here's our focus. Um, so this distance is C. And this distance is A. And then last but not least we have our covertices, which are going to be on the minor axis. We call it minor because it's smaller. So that's a vertex, covertex, sorry. And that is also a covertex. And this distance is B. Okay. And so whatever that distance is, and you notice here the formula is not too bad. Whatever that distance is, we could take B and we could then plug it into the formula and we know what's underneath. And if we know the center is 0, 0, um, we can actually set up an equation. So let's say I told you that A is equal to, I don't know, 4 and B is equal to 2. Uh, we know it's centered at the origin, so I can take that information and plug in 2 at the bottom for B. 4 at the bottom for y, and the actual equation for this guy would be x squared over 4 plus y squared over 16 is equal to 1. And so if those were the numbers for a and b, this is what we have for our equation. And we can reverse the process. If I gave you this, you could find a and b, and we'll talk about how to find c, but you could find a and b. You know it's centered at the origin. You can plot everything and draw the picture. Um, and that's how we work with an ellipse. And we'll do specific problems um, in the subsequent videos.